Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we will be looking at infrared and in particular we will be looking at how we can control devices and LEDs through infrared as well as how we can save infrared remote codes for use in further projects. Now if you take a look at my remote this is from my sound surround system and it's quite old to be honest but still works perfectly but the remote have seen better days if you can see it here in the middle and missing some buttons so it's always a hassle to increase and lower the volume as well as tune to radio stations when needed so I wanted to make a device where I would be able to extract the codes that this remote sends to the receiver on the other end and for that I built this device. What this is is an infrared receiver. It's connected through an old MCU and I have it plugged in with uh, the serial monitor on the Arduino ID. And when I press any of the buttons on the remote, the infrared receiver picks up the code and it then outputs the command that was sent through the serial. So that would allow me to get and extract all of the codes from the remote for all of the buttons. And at the later stage, we can then build an infrared emitter uh, with an IR diode, which I unfortunately I don't have at the moment, but I have some ordered and we will look at that uh, later on. Now let's see this in action. So over here, I have the Arduino ID with uh, this sketch uploaded uh, to the particular node MCU. And down here we have the serial monitor so if i press any of the buttons then i would see that i would get an output like this displaying what's the protocol that the remote uses what's the address and the command as well as the raw data that uh, was sent and this is the particular piece of information that we want to that we are interested in and that i want to save so if we now press another button uh, we would see that um, we get slightly different code and depending on what button we press these codes change so I've used this to basically come up with uh, this uh, table and what this table is it has all of the buttons that I have on the remote so it starts with the power mute front plus front minus center plus center minus and all the way down to the volume plus and volume minus as well as the tuning plus and tuning minus buttons and i now have all of the codes for every single one of the buttons so in theory this allows me that i would be able to build a device that could emulate this code and send it via an infrared diode and the receiver should be able to receive it and act accordingly. You probably already noticed that I have some extra components on the breadboard here and in particular I have two LEDs, one green and one red, that are connected through the node MCU and I have a piece in the code that uh, checks for a specific code, so for example um, I could press the front plus button to turn on the green LED, I'm not sure how the that's translated through the video but i can turn it on and off using the front plus and front minus and i can do the same with the red led using the uh, surround plus and surround minus buttons so this is just an example how we can use the infrared remotes to control our projects basically we need to read the code and act based on the code and identify to either turn on or turn off something. To connect the infrared uh, receiver, we provide power to the far right pin and ground to the middle pin. The infrared receiver can operate anywhere from two and a half to five and a half volts. So we could directly plug it to the uh, 3.3 volts and ground here on the node MCU. And the final connection, the third one on the far left, is the signal that I have it connected to uh, D5 at the moment. D5 is then used as a digital input to read all of the codes that are transmitted 
via the remote. Before we dive into the code of the receiver, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay and their fantastic CNC services. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, PCBWay provides a versatile and precise CNC machining solution that fits your project needs. With a range of materials and custom options, you can easily turn your designs into reality. Their quick turnaround time ensures your project keeps moving without a hitch. Their offering includes 3-axis CNC milling, 5-axis CNC manufacturing, as well as CNC turning, so they have you covered with anything that you want to manufacture. Visit the link in the video description to get a welcome bonus and check out the awesome capabilities that PCBWay puts at your fingertips. Now, if we look at the code, it's uh, fairly simple. We are using the IR remote library. And at the beginning, we need to define what's the protocol that the remote uses. The library has some example sketches where if you don't know the protocol that the remote uses, you could find it out. Um, and we are defining the receiver pin as D5. That's the output of the IR receiver that's connected to the node MCU. Within the setup function, we are defining uh, the serial communication as well as beginning the communication with the infrared receiver and in this last part we are defining d2 and d3 as outputs and those are the outputs that control our leds within the loop section we are listening for any signal on the receiver on the r receiver and when a signal is decoded then we're printing out the data that to the serial that was sent over via the remote and uh, then we are using a switch command that we are looking at the decoded raw data. In case we have some specific command, then we are issuing digital write to turn on and off or off the LEDs. So for example, if we look at this code is and compare it to the um, table that we have from before, we could see that this one is the surround plus so f9067 f80 and that's this one so we turn on the d3 to high which is then connected to the red led and that would turn it on and similarly the next one in the line which is the surround minus will turn it off finally at the end of the sketch, we need to tell the infrared uh, receiver to resume listening for our codes and this repeats indefinitely. So the receiver is kind of waiting all the time for the code. When something comes up, it decodes it and acts upon it and then it continues listening for new codes. To be able to get the codes that are from the missing buttons, I used a blunt screwdriver. So this is my regular screwdriver, but upside down and if I bring it close to the points and make a particular connection then you would see that I'm starting to get the data for the buttons and this hopefully will serve me well when I go and uh, make a clone of this remote to uh, be able to use it or even better use a node MCU to connect everything with my home assistant uh, system and control the surround system through node assistant. A particular quirk in the protocol that uh, this remote uses is the repeat code. So for example, if I press on something once, then we see that we only get that command once on the serial output. But if I press and hold, then I would initially get the command and then I would get a special command uh, which is the repeat command and this is used uh, from the remote so it can distinguish between press and press and hold so it would usually count up uh, the values or down depending on what was the original command to increasingly go through the numbers and that sometimes might be a problem with uh, with the remotes where we are expecting them to act and we are kind of aiming at the receiver so we've pressed once and we've kind of hold mm, hoping that the whatever is on the receiving end listened to the first command and then would um, re recognize our command 
which in fact if it misses the first command then it won't know what to do with any of the repeat commands so it's better if your device did not respond on the first time then you just try and reissue the command by pressing on the button again instead of just press and holding it and aiming at the receiver and with that i hope that you now have a much better understanding of how the infrared receivers work how we can use them on projects and if you have any specific ideas on what we can do with the remote codes that we stored, then be sure to leave them down in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.